I've owned uh, three Land Rovers and over the last 18 years. This is my third one, but it's my first Defender, and I'm really having a lot of fun with it. I've had it about a year and a half, and I've uh, media blasted the frame and the underside. I've repaint, recoated that, uh, went through all the brakes, uh, went through the interior, installed Exmoor trim, and put in a really nice um, um, a, a audio system. And then the last thing I wanted to work on was the engine. So I don't have any history from previous owners about what's been done to the engine. So it's got 99,000 miles. So I just pulled a valve cover. It runs great, but I pulled a valve cover just to look. And there was some buildup, some carbon buildup. Not as bad as I've seen, but enough that I decided to go ahead and pull it down. There's not a specific problem that I'm looking for, but I'll know at 99,000 miles that the engine's fresh and uh, it's, it's uh, been almost completely rebuilt. So I'll pull it all apart here at my home garage and um, I'll document the process. I've always enjoyed and appreciated other people that put together videos. I've looked at plenty of YouTube videos about other people doing things like this so I can learn. So hopefully this will be instructional, informational to others and I can always take questions about it. So. So it's time to pull it into the garage and uh, start the process. So I just wanted to take you on the journey with me. So I've, uh, I've rebuilt a few engines in my life, but probably only I could count on one hand. So I'm not an expert. This is not what I do for a living, but it's uh, something I've got a lot of ex I've pretty good experience with for a backyard mechanic. So, all right, here we go. So through the magic of video editing, I'm going to jump us ahead by a few, uh, a few days of work. So I've actually got the whole engine apart and I decided to make this video just about the, uh, the putting everything back so it could be a lot easier to watch and not as gross with all the dirty parts from the engine. So a couple of things I wanted to show that I thought was clever. Up front here you've got the AC compressor and the alternator and a big heavy bracket. Ideally that would be removed, it'd be out of the way, but that would require me to um, remove all the refrigerant and unhook everything. So I decided to suspend this, uh, you see how that's just hanging there. Decided to suspend that whole 40 pound system by this uh, metal brace. It's just hanging by a, by a strap and that way I did not have to lose all my refrigerant and it saves a lot of steps going back. I did the same thing for this heat exchanger for the, uh, for the air conditioning as well because I ended up pulling the camshaft and um, that had this heat exchanger, it's not a radiator, it's for the AC, had to be moved up about five inches to make room for the camshaft to come out. So, so the fun part is over here. So here's the job. Everything you see on these tables is what's about to go back. Everything is reconditioned, new, cleaned, painted, whatever is necessary. So just a quick summary. I sent the heads out to my favorite machine shop and had them do a standard valve job, uh, check everything, uh, test for any cracks or grind the valves, check the springs, um, completely redo the heads. I did decide to put a new camshaft in. Uh, the other camshaft was showing some wear and also this is a higher lift cam. It comes out of a higher performance engine of the same type so that'll be nice to get a little bit of a little bit of additional uh, performance. The rocker arms, I replaced the shafts for the rocker arms because they were a little bit worn, but it's the same rockers. I'm replacing all the lifters. Those are brand new lifters, new timing chain and gears. Uh, the front cover is all just cleaned up and painted, but I did put in a new oil pump and a new front seal. Uh, head gaskets are composite factory L-ring brand. Uh, just cleaned up the fuel injectors and replaced the O-rings. All these um, covers, the plenum and the valve covers, just painted and cleaned up. Uh, intake manifold, again, just cleaned up and looked for any kind of damage, no issues there. And just on and on, valve cover gaskets, the pulleys for the front accessories, cleaned up and painted the uh, oil pan. So all new stainless steel. Um, hose clamps and new hoses and gaskets and so this is a this is everything but 
pistons and main bearings. I looked really carefully at the um, at the pistons, looked really good, and the crankshaft below looked really well, looked really good. I uh, can still see, I don't know if it'll show up on camera, cross hatching from the original uh, milling or boring of the uh, cylinder liners. So I feel really confident about the uh, condition of the um, of the pistons and the cylinders and the crank. It's 99,000 miles and um, so this is almost everything but not everything and uh, so I'm going to start putting it back together now and you can follow along with me. Alright here's our new camshaft. By the way that mark is nothing. That little mark right there. So I'm just going to put some some assembly lube on here. Let's see how this goes. Last one probably be the hardest but that worked one of the lifters and I've got I've got a record of which one it is was you know those lifters are supposed to rotate like this as they're being activated and uh, the cam lobe is built with a rake angle on it to cause those to rotate it was obvious one of the one of the old lifters the cam lobe had been hitting the lifter at the same place over and over so the lifter was not rotating and so that would that was the problem lobe that is another reason why I was happy to replace the lifters and the cam All right, so that looks lined up. I'm going to double double check it. Yep, there it is. So the number one piston is at top dead center, and I've got my timing mark here on the cam sprocket, timing mark here on the cams on, on the crank sprocket, timing mark here on the cam sprocket. Bolt is tightened to 59, 58 newton meters with a little bit of blue Loctite and I'll lubricate this chain before um, before I put the timing cover on. Alright, I'm putting on the timing cover and it's very important to do a good job with this because if this thing leaks it really gets all over the engine. The front pulley throws it around. So I put a little bit of Hylomar on the other side, the side you can't see, because this side has, has a little bit, has a bead, you can see that bead. Some people say you can put it on dry. I just did the smallest amount of Hylomar. So, now I'm going to put some thread locker, blue thread locker on the, on the bolts. Also very important not to mess up the uh, crankshaft uh, seal. So when I put the damper in I need to make sure I don't fold that seal back or hurt that seal. I try not to overuse the Hylomar or whatever RTV I use because 
anything more than just a skin will just squeeze out. So it really doesn't, you know, it's, if you just add more, it just it just squeezes out. So it doesn't, it just needs to be a skin of material, of a sealer. These long ones are the ones that go all the way through. So they hold pressure on the timing cover and the water pump. Someone's been into this engine before. This cover's been off. You know, I bought this thing. It's in really good shape, but I didn't get any history at all. Nothing. Zero. I got a shiny vehicle, and that's it. So, that's okay. So, I've probably done a lot of things that maybe weren't necessary, but, you know, my standards are important to me and so I've just done things so I know for sure they're right you know like every fluid change and um, the things I'm doing right now in fact well that's one of the more tedious pieces of this whole thing so I'm gonna turn the camera off and go back around check everything again and then I think I'll be complete with the timing cover and water pump and chain and sprockets and oil pump and camshaft and lifters. All right. So the next big event is uh, getting the heads back in place. So just a reminder, I sent the heads out. So I got the valves ground, everything got cleaned and inspected, and we did one quick pass on the mating surface. So we know the heads are true and are ready to go on. I've just cleaned them with alcohol or brake cleaner just to make sure the surface is clean. Done the same thing on the uh, block, on the mating surface of the block. So there wasn't a lot of carbon or gasket effort uh, to remove the gasket. It was it came off easily, but the tops of the pistons were um, uh, did have some carbon build up, so I cleaned that, but they look great now. So the threads, the head bolt threads are all clear. Everything's ready to go. So I'm going to drop on the uh, the gaskets and then set the heads in place and then start the process of putting in head bolts which has a very specific process of torquing those bolts that I'll talk about in a minute. So I'm going to set up the camera in a different orientation for that exercise. So I'll just work on this passenger side first. The head gaskets are symmetric so it doesn't matter which one's left or right, but they do have a top and top or bottom. So I've made sure that I've got the top, and it actually says top, makes it really easy. These are L-Ring brand gaskets. So there are there are locating pins. So when I bring the head in, I need to make sure I don't scar up the. Um, the gasket I need to drop the head in place very easily without uh, without misaligning it until I get the uh, the pins lined up this wiring harness is kind of in the way but I've got it zip tied off the best I can All right, gasket gasket is still good. All right, that's better. Okay, definitely on the pins there. So I'll work on this side until it's all the way in, and then I'll switch to the other side. So the agreed upon process is you lightly coat the bolts. These are new bolts, by the way. They're one-time use. Uh, they are they're considered stretch bolts, so you lightly coat the bolts with motor oil, not a lot, and three of them are longer than the rest. And I'm just going to make these finger tight for now. Alright, so 15 inch, 15 foot pounds is not very much, and so I'm using an inch pound torque wrench. 
here is my the torquing pattern. It's not that unusual. It kind of starts from the center and works out. Um, I got my a lot of these parts for this project from Rover's North, Rover Parts, excuse me, and um, they have been pretty good. All right, so 15 foot pounds is 180 inch pounds. So there's 180 inch pounds. I'm just following this. That's number three. Number four is down here. All right, so here's the setup. Breaker bar, 16 millimeter, uh, is what I'm using for these bolts. And here's the little, it's not a dial indicator, but it looks like one. So you can set this to, uh, to zero, and I've got it keyed in to just a hole here. And then as I turn this 90 degrees, I'll be able to keep track of that. And so this is gonna be very slow and tedious. You're not gonna wanna watch all this, but I'll do one or two, and then, um, and then you can catch up with me at the end. So, here we go. All right, so there's 90 for that one. And I'll continue to follow that same pattern and reset this jig up each time. And I'm putting the first 90 degree turn on each bolt. And then I do it all over again for the second 90 degree turn. Then I do the other head. So I'm gonna turn the camera off and uh, you get the idea and I'll come back when I maybe do the last bolt or something like that. So I finished the passenger side putting the head back on. I did that initial torque and then two increments of 90 degree turns and it went pretty well. It went perfect. It went fine. No issues. So it's just uh, tricky to get to all the angles with what are the right extensions and things like that but it worked fine. And the second head which I'm about to do now will go a lot easier I'm sure because of the uh, learning curve from, from the first one. So that's where we are. I'm gonna set the camera up again and we'll do the second head for the driver's side. All right, same routine here. Everything is perfectly clean. I can use the other side, yeah, to uh, to compare it, and that looks good. I'm gonna drop the bolts in. On the exhaust manifold, the cast iron exhaust manifold, um, I took a flat file and I clean the surface, the mating surface where the exhaust manifold would connect to the head because there was some uh, carbon build up there and I wanted to make sure four, five, that that I had a perfect uh, six uh, mating surface between the cast iron exhaust manifold and the head so that flat file was a good idea. It knocked down some of the high points. So the heads are all bolted down, torqued, and I feel good about that. It felt good. It felt right when I was tightening those. There wasn't anything strange or unexpected. Um, so now it's time to put on the rocker shafts and the rocker arms and the push, push rods. But before I do that, I wanted to show, this is the device I was using to do the, uh, the final tightening of the head bolts. You see the graduated um, situation there, so you just put this in line with your torque with your torque wrench and it gives you a half inch female there and a half inch male there. And you just have to key it to something with this uh, with this lever. So that just hits something. And then as you tighten as you uh, make those turns you can keep track of that 
degree change. So that was kind of clever. That's the first time I had used something like that. So now I'm going to drop in the push rods and then I'll come back with the rocker arms after that. So 28 foot-pounds on these, which is not a lot, but that's okay. It's an aluminum head, so you can't get too carried away with high torque ratings. Again, I'm not loading up the shaft at this point. I'm just getting these bolts down into a position. In fact, I can push this whole thing down. So you know the old saying, work smarter, not harder. I'm in the process of putting on the exhaust manifold. And as you can see, the um, exhaust manifold is down there, and there are the ports. So the, you know, the bolts need to go in there. And, but that, that manifold is, uh, is hooked to the entire exhaust. And when I unbolted that, of course it dropped down. It also dropped back. So in order to in order to pull it up and forward it was too heavy and there's no place to wedge and I don't have enough leverage to pull it up while putting in a bolt. So I rigged up this. I've got a 4x4 four four and I've got two ratchet straps. One of them is going to pull. You can see the strap wrapped around the um, exhaust port. Uh, down tube there and then it comes up to this 4x4 four four, but as I st if I try to crank that the 4x4 four four will try to rotate so I have another strap equal and opposite force that is uh, coming off of the 4x4 four four and goes back to the head bolt uh, to, a head, to a lift point for the engine back there so as I crank this ratchet strap that exhaust manifold comes up. You see that? So it's almost lined up so I can make the last little adjustment with a pry bar or something but I'm not trying to hold up 40 pounds, 50 pounds. The, ex the whole exhaust all the way back to the uh, rear hanger is hanging on that so this will make it a lot easier to put those bolts in for that exhaust manifold. So I thought that was uh, a clever workaround. Okay, so the passenger side exhaust manifold is on, and my process worked with the uh, 4x4. So now I do the same thing on the driver's side. So you can see the manifold there, and it's my jig with the, with the ratchet strap. So if you look at the gap there, and then I uh, I do that, and it helps me bring that manifold up and supports all that weight, so I can focus on getting the threads lined up and the gaskets in place and not be worried about lifting. 
that whole exhaust system. All right, so I've started to um, install the gasket material. There is a leading edge piece. You probably can't see it from the camera, but this um, black part right here. And it's also a black strip in the back that seals that edge of the valley. The next thing to go on is the valley pan gasket. Um, so you see how I've used some blue um, Hylomar. It's blue uh, gasket sealer. It's RTV. Uh, to seal those water ports, the four water ports, that's kind of a weak spot. And um, But I didn't put it all around all of the other intake ports. I just did the... Um, just did the water ports there. So I've also, I took a couple of bolts and cut the heads off and I was going to try this. I don't know if it'll work, but I was going to try to see if that would help me line up the uh, the, the intake manifold because you're kind of in the blind when you're putting that in. And uh, It'd be nice to have something to use to lower that manifold down so this uh, valley pan gasket wouldn't um, move around and get misaligned. So I've never heard anyone else do that, but I thought I'd try it and see if it'll work. So I'm going to go get the, uh, the intake now. So I made sure that the mating surfaces on the intake are also clean. Alright, so it should be like that. Let's see if my technique works. Huh. The wiring harness is a real real joy to work around. Well, <laughs> I think that worked. So because of those pins, I'm already here. So it looks pretty good. I'm going to take those pins out now. Well, the uh, camera battery died while I was putting on the intake manifold, but that all went great. No issues. It's just that standard process where you uh, get everything, make sure everything's lined up, and then you incrementally tighten the bolts up into the torque in, in, a, uh, in a pattern working your way from the inside out. So, so that went fine and it's time now for the fuel rail. The fuel in, this is a fuel injected engine and so here's the fuel rail. The good news is the parts table looks better and better all the time. So, uh, everything is just kind of uh, the outside of the engine. But So this is the fuel injection rail. I didn't change the uh, uh, fuel injectors. I just um, cleaned them and put in new O-rings. So I'm going to drop that in now. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Okay, so since the last uh, video I've got the air box installed, I decided to go ahead and install that now because nothing's in the way. Once I build up the engine with the plenum and everything, the rest of the intake, it'll be harder and harder to get back there to the back. So now it's time for, I guess I call these the velocity stacks, these, uh, these uh, intake tubes. This is a pretty simple operation here, <laughs> like that. And I'm going to put on their, uh, da -da, I think it's like six bolts.
Well, I'm super happy with how everything turned out. I've done a lot since the last video. Uh, did all the plumbing, hung all the accessories on the front end of the engine, put back all the, like I said, hoses, radiator, uh, shroud, fan. Oh, check out this massive uh, <laughs> wrench that I used to, uh, had to use that to, to uh, tighten the fan bolt. The bolt, the, uh, how the fan threads on is uh, a massive bolt. I've, I've had that thing for years, but I don't think I've ever used it until now. So I fully expect there to be some probably lifter noise more than anything else just because they're brand new lifters and they need to find their way with those followers and uh, so on the camshaft so brand new camshaft new lifters so there'll be a break-in period so I also expect a lot of smoke coming off the manifold and and uh, exhaust just from fluids running down on that but let's get it started Again, I want to see the oil light, which is right there. I want to see that go out soon. All right, that's not bad. Here, a little tick from a lifter. And uh, I need to run it at a higher RPM, probably 2,000 soon just to break in the uh, camshaft, probably hold it at 2,000 for, you know, five minutes or three minutes or something. I'll do that in a little bit, but I just wanted to get it started. So, very cool. Yeah, that's definitely all eight cylinders. And here comes the smoke from the uh, burning off the exhaust manifold. fan of PB Blaster and Croil, so I use it on all of my bolts when I'm taking them off. But uh, yeah, I'm super happy with how that's running. That is, uh, that sounds really good. All right, so I'm gonna use this last clip to end this video. Uh, I'm just super pleased. I've done things like this before, but not a lot. I've probably done four engines in my life and I'm 55 years old. So I just am really pleased. Man, it just starts, and all the, any noise has gone away. It just starts and runs so smoothly. So um, the smoke is working its way out. It's probably only run for a total of four minutes since I rebuilt it. But um, I'll put it away and I will uh, watch it over the next few days and drive it uh, over the next, uh, over the weekend. And uh, it could be I'll find something, a little leak or something, but I doubt it. Yeah, so it's uh, been really a great experience. Now I know the engine's in great shape. The camshaft was the main motivation. And it's always good to have new head gaskets on these 4.0s. So that's the end of the video. I welcome any questions or comments and uh, happy travels.